guys, it's Cyberporn92 here. Hope everyone have a wonderful day. Today we're going to be doing Yu-Gi-Oh! Top 32 YCS Remote Duel and I'm here with who? Yeah. Alright, Brian Chen. Uh, what did you do at the YCS Remote Duel recently? I went X1 and Swiss. Um, only lost to uh, Birds uh, because of Imperial Order Game 3. Um, and I lost Top 32 to Sword Soul. Also to Imperial Order, so yeah. For sure. And what what made you want to play Sky Striker? Since I know the um the commentary asked um like you play Sky Striker because like Nibiru and plus you've been used to um playing the deck um com uh, since it came out. I play Sky Striker because it's like more like a pet deck. I've been playing it since um basically the first event I topped with it was the one I won um a couple years couple years ago right before the pandemic. Um, so honestly, I've been just like playing it since. Um, and if you for me, it's like if I play the same deck, I don't need to buy the new ones and stuff. I just work really hard to like um, figure out the format, you know, just adjust the hand traps based on the format, and then um, yeah, just c come with the Sky Striker deck and then uh, play all the tournaments. And then I personally, I think I did pretty well in the past couple of years. So yeah, that's why I play Sky Striker. Uh, congrats on top thirty two, and congrats all your uh, premier top and first place with Sky Striker back in the day. And would you say that like uh, that's the only deck you've been playing for this whole event event uh, before the event? Yeah, I I pretty much only play Sky Striker like in person. Um, I do like borrow my friends' decks sometimes. You know, play test like some Sword Soul decks. Um, uh, can't really think of other decks I've played in the past. Um, just pretty much just this deck. But I I've, I've like um played online like you know tested a lot of different decks. You know that's how I like understand the format. So yeah. All right, sounds good. All right, ready when you are, Brian. All right, for sure, for sure. Yeah. All right. So for the monsters, um, obviously three ray. It's like the best starter, um, one of the best starters in the game. I think. Um, doesn't. It's basically like trades with like two different cards by itself. Um, its only weakness is just like cards like Solemn Strike, where it's like really costly under normal summon. Um, but yeah, don't need to explain about that. Uh, one rose. Um, uh, even though this is another starter, I will explain it because a lot of people are playing two to three rows. And in this deck, I think if you go first and you start Rose, there is like a 90% chance that you will like get OTK the next turn because it provides no protection. And it's more of an extender um, to make like Link 2s and um, for you to get like a, like an extra starter when you like Nibiru them or like pop their extra deck monster. Oh, sorry, uh, a monster summon the extra monster zone. Um, it also has some like niche effects of like negating Dragoon and stuff, um, non-targeting. But I will say that like the games that you don't open this, you actually have a better chance of winning even if you do open no starters because you open cards like There Can Be Only One, Fusion Destiny, and other stuff. So that's why I only opted, opted to play one. True. Um, and I played the two bricks. Um, I actually drew this, of uh, both of them, in the same five-card opening hand twice this tournament. Um, I actually won one of the games because um, I just had There Can Be Only One and my opponent opened uh, all sorts of hand. <laughs> or all, <laughs> all um, uh, worm hand. So yeah, uh, honestly, this is like one of the best... like parts of the format, the Phoenix and Force of it, like, um, engine. So I didn't regret playing these, but I wish I would just draw them a little less, but, you know, what can you do? It's, like, the cost of, like, having, like, a really good engine. And for the hand traps, I play 3 Ash. Um, it's just my Fusion Destiny, and um, this is just to stop Emergence also. Uh, a lot of times, you don't need to stop Ecclesia. If you stop Emergence, like, have a way to stop Baron, like, and Emergence, then you won't be locked out of playing the following turn and, like, be able to break the board and set up uh, Anaconda. So I think this is like really important in the format, even though it's like a very low impact hand trap right now. Uh, also, effect veiler. Um, this is also like a pretty low impact hand trap, but in conjunction with uh, Nibiru, it's uh, really good. And I also played the Hauxelene package, so um, that's also why I play this as well. Um, overall, it can be something that's like, you know, um, like a, it's one of the cards where your opponent can't interact while it's like in your hand. Like they can't like lightning storm it or cosmic cycle in it, so it's like kind of like a hidden interruption. Uh, I only play two Nibiru because this deck can't actually get the cards out of your hand a lot. Um, since, since I'm not playing any Nightmare cards, and I really want to like take advantage of cards like Celestial to like draw cards. Um, also, it's like a main monster zone type of deck, so if this gets stuck in there, you like um, you, you can lose a lot of games sometimes. But uh, Nibiru is a good card, honestly, so that's why I opted to play that. Yeah, true. Uh, before getting to your spells, would you change any of your monster lined up or anything like that? Um, it would probably. If I were to like, if the format got a little more crazy, it would probably just be the third Nibiru. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I don't think so. I don't think I'd play. I'd ever play two rows. So, yeah, uh, just the third Nibiru. If I were to change it, to be honest. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, and then for the spell cards, uh, everyone's favorite, engage. Uh, three widows. Uh, 
two shark cannon. Um, honestly, a lot of people tell me you only need one, and at first I really doubted them because I was like, oh, it's a Phoenix Enforcer format. Um, but I did find myself citing it a lot, uh, citing citing it out a lot going like first and against most matchups like Sword Soul because this doesn't really interact with your opponent's cards as well as they should, uh, as as well as cards that you're playing in your deck should be. So. Um, I think I can cut it to one, but I do like playing two, so you can set one, end phase them, um, Shizuku, Shizuku add one, um, banish a monster your opponent, in your opponent's graveyard, and then sometimes you can reset it off multi to have double shark cannon. So that play can be really strong, but that play doesn't come up as often as you think, but um, personally I didn't regret playing two the whole tournament. I think like I would miss it a lot more than like, you know, if I just played one, so yeah, just uh, two shark cannons. Uh, afterburners, um, so recently um, I've Cited this out going first a lot because this card is basically just Celestial and Dasher going first. It doesn't really do anything for your turn, and just like as long as you don't like die on your like opponent's turn, like when you start, you should be able to win the game because your cards generate so many so much advantage by themselves. So I do cut this out like um, going first, but I also haven't regretted like not seeing this because Widow Anchor is basically afterburners. There's not a lot of like Cosmo Dark Destroyers or like Haven Maxes in the format. So honestly, I don't really miss this a whole much, but. Um, I guess backward deck is really good too, so that's why you play. I, that's why I made the one burner. I didn't like cite it or like not play it at all. So yeah, uh, multi roll. Um, this is also one of the bricks in the deck when you go first, but this is like a really good mid game late game card. So that's why you play that. Also in conjunction with airspace, it's really good as well. Um, one hornet, um, basically just like a starter. Uh, one card anaconda, which is like pretty broken. Uh, I play two pots because um, I don't want to draw this off celestial and this. A lot of people say, you know, this card sucks in Sky Striker. It, it does at times, but if you just banish the right things and you, like, manage your resources really well, uh, Pot of Prosperity will be, like, really good. And um, if you just, like, don't play as many, um, you won't draw it off Celestial. Or, like, when you engage draw, you won't hit it as well. But this is more so of a consistency card, especially post side where you cite all your um, oppressive trap cards, then this can dig for those as well. Uh, yeah, and then uh, two Droplet. Uh, I didn't want to play three because this is, like, this deck needs a lot of its resources early, but um, it's also a spell card, and you can Widow take their stuff and then send it with droplets. Um, this is like a lot of cool interactions, and there's a lot of monsters with 3,000 attack in the format, so like Baron, mm -hmm. where you can droplet, send a monster, negate Baron, and then I'll take Crash to get Ray, summon, and then attack, and then uh, play around effect Ray There's like a lot of like cool interactions with droplets, especially doing a damage step as well. Alright, and then obviously 3 Fusion Destiny with the... Uh, uh, Destiny Hero Package, you know, basically the format. Uh, Call by the Grave is Shark Cannon, but like it stops uh, Ash for your Fusion Destiny, and then um, stops the 10 E's as well, so they, even if they had Harwood back, they can't use it, so yeah. Uh, Terraforming and Rhoda, um, the one of spell cards that is really good. So yeah, that was my spell lineup. Um, but yeah, I totally agree with you when you say the Shark Cannon next to the Burner, like it's also an easy side out card and also like a lot of stuff in the graveyard, especially like Sword Soul or any other decks like usually use their grave since I've been watching a lot of Sword Soul in the top cuts as well. Uh, will you change any of your any of your spell lineup or play an extra pot? Or you want to? Actually, um, oh, speaking of pot, I also wanted to mention that this card is like really bad going second because. Mm -hmm. Because if you cite cards in that are like good to play on your opponent's turn, you'd rather have those than pot, and mm -hmm. that just makes it an easy side out. So, uh, I think playing three, there would be like too many cards you would have to side out. And True. like I said, I don't want to draw this off any of my like draw cards, so mm -hmm. it would like conflict with the turn. I want like as many resources as like possible to like break my opponent's board. Mm -hmm. And this isn't a deck where you can like afford to like two card combo with like any two cards in your deck. Like you have to specifically open a pilot mm -hmm. and or just grind it out with Fusion Destiny. So that's why I only play two, and I'd probably stick to playing two. True, sounds good, sounds good. Yep, and the traps are pretty simple. It's just uh, three infinite impermanence, and three there can be. This card is the best floodgate in the game, I think, um, next to Imperial Order. Um, <laughs> it just automatically wins the games against Sword Soul, and against Blunder, you can literally set a card, pass, and you probably win the game. I'm not even kidding. Like They would just go uh, M-Pin, set Dreamy Town, summon Barrier Statue. You flip this, and you just keep draw you just keep drawing cards until like you uh, find an out. And also, your opponent can't even... Um, Unexplored wins if they have a wing beast already because you know they're locked into wing beast. So you just get hella turns to like draw out like your your um, broken cards like after burners and like widow anchor droplet and all those like good cards. True, so yeah, true. this is definitely a reason why I w decided to play uh, go for a sky striker. True, true. And uh, second question is that uh, I was surprised you didn't play no mystic mine. I was wondering uh, any concern about that. Um. So 
I feel like decks that lose to Mystic Mind are always mainly Imperial Order or have ways to like beat Mystic Mind. Mm -hmm. And I personally have never topped or like performed well with a deck with Mystic Mind because I just mm -hmm. every time I would like every time I would like think about oh in testing every time I would like um try to stall out with Mystic Mind, they always have like one duster in their deck, IO, like <laughs> a single cosmic, and it's just like to me it's just like no real reason to like draw the game out because they will a lot of times if they don't scoop, they will have an out, and it's like you can't really like react as well as you like, That's true. you know, should be like they can just like lightning storm you with five back with six back rows, there's no solemn judgment to protect your stuff, and then they just like summon like a card that protects from hand traps, and then you just like lose the game. So that's why I didn't want to play Mystic Mind. I don't think it's even that good. So true. yeah, makes sense. Uh, side extra, uh, whichever uh, you want to go first. <clears throat> uh, I'll just do extra first. Um, so I played Phoenix Enforcer. This is like the core of the deck. More or less now. Uh, two Hayate, uh, three Kagari. I guess this is also the core of the deck. Uh, three Chizuku. Um, I don't think you can play less than uh, three because a lot of times you're going to summon it during your opponent's turn if you have like Aerospace DPE um, as like a fake starter. Um, you just need to like grind out all your spell cards early. And then like this, it comes up a lot where you nib Sword Soul and you pr they protest you for dark. Uh, you won't be able to make any of your Link 2s beside Needle Fiber and then Needle Fiber only turns into access code, otherwise you're just sitting on Selene, nothing, basically. Um, but this, if you have one spell in the grave and you Nibiru with them, uh, it puts Protoss at uh, less than 3,000 defense, so you'll be able to attack with Nibiru, so that's one of the cool interactions with this deck. Uh, so yeah, I think Shizuku is like, really important, and I feel like you can Prosperity away one of them, and it like, won't even hurt, so... Yeah, three, 3 came up a lot, so that's why I played 3. I feel like I, w I shouldn't have to explain it, but I see a lot of people play 2 now these days. Uh, Kaina, um, this actually came up a lot, I'm not gonna lie. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, you can banish it easy, you have Prosperity. But there's a lot of times where they have Protos, and then, um, you just Kaina them, and then they can't attack with the Protos because, you know, Kaina, and then, like, you keep your, your Link, and then all your Links are, like, basically, uh, not dark except this one. So, um, yeah, kind of played a pretty big role in the deck now. Uh, Zeke, this is to clear the stuff, and then, you know, banishing, pretty good, um... Send stuff like if you just widow anchor Phoenix Enforcer, you know, at some points, like if you don't link it off, you can send it, you know, a bunch of other cool interactions with it. Yeah. Uh, Verte format basically. Um, I just had to play Hauk and Celine. Uh, before I was playing Win and Doom Eagle uh, as my two and three, or even Win and Dagda, but this, I, I, this isn't really like a artifact centric deck, and I don't feel like I don't feel like the times that like you make the link to it'll ever come up because the only times you'll make a link to is if you take someone's monster, which most of the time won't be a tuner because threats aren't really like tuners most of the, uh, now these days. And the most that the most of the time that you get to make a link to, it's because they banish your Phoenix Enforcer or something or put it back into the deck. You're left with Dasher and then you draw you draw like a tuner or something for a turn, and then those two would either become Anaconda, which most likely you made already to make the Phoenix Enforcer. Or you can just make Needle Fiber, bait out a free negate, because otherwise you just take 5300 and you just blow up the board. So it's like kind of something you have to interact with, otherwise you just lose. So I thought Needle Fiber and Sling were like really good uh, choices. And then Axis Code, obviously, for the um, climb up. So yeah, that was the extra. Will you change any of your extra deck, or you will just keep the everything the way it is? Uh, I'll keep everything the way it is. Um, honestly, like the only card that I can think about fitting in is Win, and I can't take out like Hulk or Celine because they just go together, like as a as a pair. Makes sense. Yeah. All right, and then for my side deck, I played uh, one Lancia and one Scythe. Um, I don't. I'm not using Lancia as like an interactive hand trap. I use it for like Artifact Sanctum in case I like. Need, a, need it for, like, uh, Fluanderies. Um, also, um, Artifact Scythe is just, like, so broken when it resolves. Um, a lot of times you can, like, summon Scythe, they Chalice it, you can DPE chain it, um, or they would just, like, Droplet, you know, try to negate both. But, like, that, that kind of happens, like, very rarely, to be honest. And a lot of times you should use your Phoenix Enforcer first to bait out Droplets, and then, like, mm -hmm. um, as, a, like, a surprise factor, you can flip Sanctum to negate it. Because a lot of the times, they, if they had Ash, they would... Um, Ash the Fusion Destiny or the Shizuku. Mm -hmm. um, very rarely you'll be able to interact with the the traps on your opponent's turn with Ash, unless they open multiples. So that's why this was like really strong. Uh, I think in the format, in, in this deck in particular, because of like how how the interactions trade with the monsters that you um, uh, put up on the board, like Shizuku and like you know all that stuff. True. And then I did play the third Nibiru in the side though, because going second, you just, sometimes you just have to have it, especially for birds and stuff. Um, a lot of times it doesn't go in because I think like 
there are a lot of better cards aside against Sword Soul, like Token Collector, which I obviously play. Um, basically, the MVP against like the ninety percent of the tournament that I play, which was <laughs> basically Sword Soul. Agree. Uh, yeah, and then two drolls. Uh, I would play three if I could make room. There were three cards in this actually uh, in the side deck that you'll see that I really wanted to play three of, but you know, fifteen card side deck, so um, can't fit at all. Um, but one card I had to play at three, which I didn't in the past, was Token Collector. This card should win you the game ninety percent of the time if it resolves. And um, my friend told me if it's uh, which which is true, um, if it sticks past the first turn, there's almost no way Sword Soul will win because they have to deal with it once and twice. They have to out it like two times unless they can shuffle it back. Um, so yeah, this is just basically auto win. This is also a monster, like a physical monster to make Anaconda with. So during like the second turn, if they don't like do any token stuff, you can just normal summon make Anaconda. So you have DP with Collector and Grave, and it's very hard to answer. So. Yep, this was definitely the MVP of the weekend, 100%. Uh, three Cosmic Cyclone. I wish I had these when my opponent uh, flipped the Imperial Order on me, because both of the times they didn't have a negate that I couldn't stop. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Also, I, I, you can't play Twin in this format because a lot of people are playing like Artifact Scythe, and like this ter- Twin's like terrible against Elish cards. So that's why I had to play mm-hmm. Cosmic, and I feel like it's not enough, but it's just like a concession you have to make to like make your deck better against other decks. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's the three comic, uh, Cosmics, and then uh, two D Barrier and two Sanctum. I wanted to play three Sanctum, but like if you draw multiples, it's really bad because it's a, hard, it's a once per turn, basically. Um, but Dimensional Barrier is really good because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you play against Sword Soul and um, they don't kill you, you should win either, we should win the game like 90% of the time. You're either making Anaconda, you're drawing like like four cards off Engage, basically, in your turn, Celestial and all that. You just have like 20 cards to so, like five, basically. Um, on the on your third turn, so you just need to like make it past the first turn, uh, which which this deck really like struggles in like be- uh, protecting yourself sometimes. So like you just have to play unfair cards like D Barrier and there can be to like draw out the game and then like um, get the cards that you need to like basically push uh, game uh, turn three. So yeah, that's why I played everything in my side deck. Sounds good. Everything seemed basic. Before ending this video, um, Brian, congrats on your nutter top. And before ending this video, do you want to give any shout outs to anyone? Yeah, I want to give a shout out um, to my friends, uh, Kenny Nguyen, uh, Dominic Couch, um, Tommy, um, shout out to Ed, Elvis, um, Team Royalty. Um, yeah, I think, oh, and um, Tom, Bruce, you know, for helping me with the deck um, as well, you know, giving me some ideas and stuff. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Sounds good. And this is your boy, Cyberborn92, is signing out. Peace.